Hello and welcome to a brief, I hope brief, webinar on primary research, how to identify primary research by um, Brenda Luther. This is me, Brenda. I am the course mentor for EBT and for the um, nursing uh, research courses and I find that typically we struggle on understanding what primary research is as compared to all the other types of research that we get. Um, types of evidence that we get, I guess. I'm saying evidence is knowledge to me. And Brown and Schmidt put it well, not all information is created equal, nor is it presented the same way. We, a lot of times students want me to say, Brenda, tell me exactly what I need to see in the title or someplace. But as, as Schmidt and Brown tell us, that we really have to be able to identify various types of information, evidence, knowledge. And it's fundamental to starting a literature review search, which is what um, you're doing in these courses. So the definition of primary research is original information presented by the people who were responsible for creating it. So the researchers who did the research are presenting their original research results. This is important because Ethically and morally in scholarly literature, uh, researchers don't present their research findings multiple times in multiple journals. They do it in one journal. They may, they may have a research study that had four uh, pieces of, or four primary research articles presented from it, but they're only presenting that data within one article. So primary research is the original data being reported by the original researchers. There's no easy way to, to identify that, and a lot of other definitions of evidence uh, confuse us. And here's some of the typical ones. Evidence summaries, secondary sources, peer, and the terms peer-reviewed or scholarly or trade journals get us confused, so I want to just spend a minute talking about those other sources, other types of evidence, and other processes that get in the way of understanding what we're looking for with primary research. An evidence summary or secondary sources are not primary research, they're a review of literature. They're collecting many pieces of primary research and putting it together for you. We really rely on these a lot. I love reading them. I love it when somebody else has done a literature review for me and I can understand a large amount of information. But in Task 1 in EPT and certainly in the literature review in SK2, we want primary research. And I put a note on here that Task 3 is a collection of any type of research to make a practice implication. So sometimes these evidence summaries or secondary sources are valuable there. Another time, uh, other times the term peer-reviewed confuses students. They think, well, if I have a peer-reviewed journal, it is primary research. Peer review isn't really about what is being published. It's a process statement. And our scholarly literature rel relies on peer-reviewed processes to present credible and critically evaluated articles. Peer review simply means that that journal has put together content experts, national, international experts, who read the uh, articles, all of them, the research articles or evidence summaries or opinion pieces, and they read them for their credibility and they critically evaluate them. And typically this is the whole process of publishing, but it assures to us that somebody else, a content expert in this area, has read it and assures that it has credibility. That said, peer-reviewed journals have, have um, you know, in the rare times, uh, still presented inaccurate literature, and they, they have to correct themselves at times or take literature down and discount it. But for the most part, a peer review process just allows us a little assurance about their credibility, but it's not telling us that they're just presenting research. They're presenting all kinds of evidence. And then, of course, there's trade literature and pot uh, popular literature. I like this one because this is the one like our mothers call us and say they just uh, watched the news and Katie Couric reported something and uh, what do you think about that? You know, and, and it'll you know be a probably a 30 second um, report of a piece of evidence, knowledge, research that's come out and it's, it's really minimal. It doesn't allow us to critique it much and it just tells us what the results are. So really they're an opinion it doesn't have a peer review process by it. We hope it's accurate, but it, it's, it's there and it's, it's very influential to people. We see a lot of our 
parents, ourselves, our clients coming in and telling us about what they heard in the trades of popular literature. So before I uh, begin this webinar or get too far into it, I want to tell you that I've really relied on text other than our text for the courses. Um, I'm really relying on Schmidt and Brown and their um, book about evidence, appraisal of, of evidence, and hope that helps you. I wanted to give you a, one more viewpoint about uh, what these things look like. So let's ask the question, is all evidence primary research? Hopefully I've answered that by just showing the examples of evidence that you may see as you search. No, uh, not all evidence is primary research. But evidence is what is our knowledge, and it's, cre it's credible to us, and it's created by us and for us. But primary research is a higher level of evidence in that it represents a scientific study, either quantitative or qualitative in nature, but it represents a rigorous scientific design and methodology that made conclusions based on um, statistical analysis for quantitative papers, or content validity, content analysis based on uh, qualitative design methods. Um, now the next critical question is all primary research sound incredible. You know, every piece of research has a flaw. Uh, they all have limitations and they all have some degree of error. And uh, the researchers will recognize this. They will call out their limitations and their error. No piece of research is perfect. Uh, research is very expensive, and it takes time, and it takes scholarship. Um, not everyone is prepared to do research. So um, we have to, that's why we critique research. We are content experts in our fields, wherever we work, in our expertise. So we really do uh, critique the credibility of the implications that researchers make for their research. So uh, as nurses, you know, we need to be comfortable identifying types of research and then begin the process of critically evaluating it. The question is worth asking, why do we use primary research? Why don't we just use, like I mentioned, the literature reviews? You know, somebody did a literature review for me. They've told me what the best practices are, what the implications are. Why would I not just depend on their, their opinion? Well, the truth is we, um, we have to be able to critique primary research because there is so much information and it's staggering and is it credible? We have to be able to answer that. To answer best practices for our, our populations, our clients, our settings, we need to be able to evaluate original research and put a lot of it together to make our own opinions. We are users of information and our practice is evidence-based. And that's what it means to be evidence-based. We can examine primary research, put it together for implications for our practice. Also, I believe we use primary research because we are the major patient advocates and patient educators. We're also called out as the number one most trusted profession in, amongst all professions, not just healthcare professions. So I think nurses um, are that way because are called that I label that by our, pop, our, our clients because we're their advocates, we're their educators, they trust us to give them accurate information. So to give accurate information, we have to be able to plow through it all, to dig into it, and to understand it. So start thinking about what makes um, evidence credible. Just because it's published doesn't mean it's credible. Publishing is certainly just like every printed uh, textbook, journal, newspaper, is becoming printed on the internet. Does that mean it's peer-reviewed still? We have to determine that. We have to determine when we look at pieces of evidence, is there an editorial board? Um, who are their, their peer reviewers? Did they, are they um, communicating enough to me that they made informed ethical opinions based on this evidence? And you certainly can see the difference in um, all kinds of sites, journal sites included, um, to, to evaluate the credibility. You look at the credibility based on, on you know, the peer review process. Is it embedded somewhere within um, that journal site or that um, the, the physical paper journal that you might have in front of you? And it, it is there. You can find the editorial board and the peer reviewed people called out. They're not, they're not hidden, they're not anonymous. 
they're listed and it's clear. So that helps start to make evidence credible. But certainly, if we go back to your clinical expertise, when you look at the conclusions, that's credibility to you. If it makes sense to you in your setting and your knowledge, the, the findings they, they uh, put forth, that brings your credibility. Well, let's talk a bit about how to identify primary evidence. And, and like I said earlier, students ask me, Brenda, just tell me where to look. And, and I, I'll find it. But you really have a, a few places where you can assess in all journals, all articles, uh, from their title and their abstract and their methodology. And I pro possibly should have put on there to the uh, citations that, that, excuse me, that um, the, uh, like EBSCO host or Ovid gives us. But let's look at the title of this. This was from simply a search on childhood obesity and um, here's what I found. Uh, the third citation came out and it said, the title said, Influence of BMI, Gender, Ethnicity on Physical Activity. And the citation underneath it, you'll notice it said research. Um, by the term, by the verb influence, I'm thinking, okay, they had to measure the influence of BMI, gender, and ethnicity on physical activity in this population. So they, na they la labeled their setting, uh, well, no, they didn't label their, no, they did kind of, their setting is urban, their population is children, their variables are BMI, gender, Hispanic, ethnicity, and physical activity, and they kind of inferred their methods by they're going to measure an influence. So I'm thinking, all these things tell me, yes, it's possibly a research article. And I'll pull up this article for you later and show you how it indeed is. Now, in that same search, I came upon this. This was my first hit, and it said factors associated with obesity. Well, that sounds to me like they are going to do a piece of research, and indeed, the citation had research in there. They said they provided tables and charts. But more importantly, in their title, they said immediately they're doing a review of literature. And in their citation, they said they're doing a systematic review. So I have a hint from this that it is not primary research. And so I would, when I would open the, the um, citation, I would find that indeed it's not primary research. So let's look at it again. Notice their review of literature, or their title said review of literature. Their abstract was an unstructured abstract, but as I read it, they told me their methods of the study, which were 24 studies were identified, and the findings of those studies. So this is a summary, an evidence summary, a review of literature, a secondary source. It's not a piece of primary research. And certainly in their methods section following it, within their article, they said a literature review was initiated. So that's not primary research. So let's go um, back to this article, The Influence of Body Mass Index, which the title and the citations kind of gave me a hint that I was thinking this is probably primary research. And indeed, when I pulled up their article, a few more hints secured that for me. Um, lots of times, if you'll notice at the top, it says original article. Journals will give citations, they'll either call it original article or original research, original meaning primary, and in the title they said influence of BMI, gender, Hispanic. I've gone over that a couple times. In their search terms they said they did a community-based um, participatory research, they did a structured abstract, and they told me in their methods section they had a sample of 104 kids and activity was assessed, and then they reported results. And then in their more detailed methods section under their design, they said they did an exploratory study. Um, I've probably told, talked about before that um, the names of types of methods are multiple. Uh, exploratory studies, correlation studies, randomized clinical control, descriptive studies, uh, quali and then those are those are kind of quantitative names, and then qualitative studies have phenomenology, grounded theory, um, ethnicity or um, ethnography, lots of lots of names for studies, and and um, that helps you say okay they did a piece of primary research, is the main goal. So 
my hint to this is that you cannot limit your search results within the search boxes of your of the engines that gather and store our millions of pieces of evidence. You can't limit those results to only get research. You can get close, but you still have to yourself be able to identify research. And you can't rely on the notations to be accurate for your purposes also. They're accurate for their purposes. They are reporting research, but they're not necessarily reporting original primary research. So that they're not inaccurate in the light of they've inaccurately noted that this article is research. No, they're saying they're accurate in saying there's some research reported here. So um, some of the things that help you get more comfortable is reading research purpose statements. I like these and typically journals drive um, authors to get real concise, to be declarative, objective, clear, and concise. They, you want to tell the methods of the study, the variables under study, and the populations. And you'll notice how, how both of the titles of the examples I used did that. Um, a purpose statement is generally the last statement made after an introduction. They'll give their whole review of literature. Every article has a review of literature just showing the background of the problem and the evidence that we know now and identifying any gaps in knowledge. And at the end of that, before they s present their own methods for research, they'll have statements that say, thus, you know, these are the remaining questions and the purpose of this study will be to explore, blah, blah, blah. I like purpose statements. They're typically very crafted and um, word crafted and, and um, encouraged to be concise. Now, all articles typically start with a problem statement. That doesn't mean that they're doing primary research. It just means that they, uh, there was a reason for this article. It may have been to present this primary research, or it may have been to present this opinion piece, or it may have been to present this review of literature, evidence summary. And they'll still have methods. They'll still say, you know, we searched in CINAHL or something, we searched in library databases. Or if they were primary research, they'll say we did a descriptive qualitative study describing something. They'll tell you who the variables are in the populations. So let's look at a few examples of a good research purpose statement. Um, this statement by Shalom, I didn't say that name right, and his colleagues, um, you'll see he stated the methods, the variables, the specific population, and the setting. Um, his methods were to do a descriptive study. That's his, his methodology. He compared uh, biarally turning and critically ill pa uh, vent patients. That was um, his variables and his population. Pneumonia, it was another variable he collected to see if it did or did not develop. And again, he stated his methods of the study of a data collection study. So. Um, I could wordcraft that right now. I would have put data collection up there with descriptive study so that the reader knew right away how they were doing this descriptive study. But and um, here's again notice you know the methods. Notice the variables under study: the turning and pneumonia. Those are the two variables that he wanted to describe, and his setting. So he knew, or you know. Um, that these are uh, critically ill patients. The settings implied, to nurses at least, maybe not everybody knows that most mechanically ventilated patients would be in a critical care setting. So that's my story on searching for primary evidence. Um, just be aware that you, it really is a skill you are refining in this, and um, a skill I'm sh assured you'll get. Please call with any questions that I can provide, and good luck. Thanks. Bye.